today's one of those days where you have to take a deep breath and not get so caught up in all the things that are going wrong. This weekend, I am staying at a hemp farm. Uh, my name is Carter, and you're at Colorado Valley Hemp. We make a documentary series, Cannabis in the Nation and Cannabis Around the World. I've come across a problem that's kind of stumped me. I am getting no water. I just unhooked from city water, and all is fine. I switched, I filled up the freshwater tank. I switched over to dry camping on my little thingamabobber thing and now I am getting no water. I know that the water pump is on, the spigot is on, I'm not getting anything to any faucet and I tested it on city water and city water works fine. It's just once I switch over to dry camping all of a sudden there's something that's just not quite right. So I'm trying to identify what the problem is. I posted on the Integra Accolade forum as well but this one's kind of stumped me. I hear the pump running so there's got to be a clog or something that's just not I don't know. I'm, I'm stumped at the moment. The good thing is I still have about a half hour before I need to get out of here, so I've got a half hour to figure it out. I'm already t attached with the tow vehicle and everything. I just need to pull the slides in, and I'm on my way, so troubleshooting. Okay, so finally on the road. I am heading toward a hemp farm, and that's where I'm going to be staying for the weekend. I'm hoping that it's going to be a great weekend. I'm hoping that it's not going to be like the morning that I just had. So here's an update on where the pump stands. I went onto the forum and I kind of posed my questions there. A lot of them came back with like, well, did you do this? Did you do, which is all the obvious stuff. You know, I checked all the obvious stuff. It sounds like what may have happened is one of two things. Either the pump is clogged just from bad water, the intake filter or something is just clogged and water's not getting through it, which is possible because I was just in the uh, desert and all that sand, maybe some sand got kicked up into it or something like that. Or uh, maybe the valve's just not working or the switches aren't working right. So, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Check out these little mountains, it's pretty cool. So I think this is gonna be the route for the next 120 miles. You know, on a travel day, um, there's so many other things that you have to worry about even when things are perfect. You can't really think too much about all the things that are not very important at the time. Now granted they're all important, but maybe right now driving, the water pump is not my concern. Making sure that I get there safely is the concern. Before I left today, I did like three walk arounds just to make sure I didn't forget anything. I even pulled out the checklist too, just to make sure I didn't forget anything. Because when your mind is all flustered, you know, you sometimes tend to just forget the stuff that you need to remember, I guess. I don't know. So anyways, I'm just going to sit here and drive in silence for a while and kind of just unwind from the morning and try and forget about the fact that I am two hours behind schedule. But whatever. At least I'm moving. Well, good morning. This weekend, I am staying at a hemp farm in Colorado. I'm just right outside of uh, Grand Junction in a little town called Clifton and uh, we're gonna go and tour this facility. I heard it's doing some fantastic things. Uh, my name is Carter and you're at Colorado Valley Hemp. I have a background in agricultural economics. The hemp market was going through like a you know a big hurrah last year. We make a documentary series it's kind of displaying what the daily life of a hemp farmer is like. What are some of the, the problems in the market? What are triumphs and success stories from taking CBD? But we always get back to CBD as medicine. We have about eight and a half acres here. Which will produce about how much a year? So you can make about one liter of CBD oil per plant. And there's about 8,000 plants out here. So you can imagine 8,000 liters of CBD oil. From Very this cool. Field. And what's cool about hemp is like, when you grow it, you get this amazing medicine, but it also heals the earth too. So it takes all these like um, heavy metals out and restores nitrogen, phosphorus, all different types of uh, things in the soil. So. You get medicine, and it gives medicine. Since it only takes 12 weeks, you know, to get seven or eight feet tall, and get all this biomass. You know, in some places you can have multiple growing seasons. Only plant in the field that's flower. None of them look like this, so it's already got these incredible trichomes on it. There's like some weird genetic mutation in this plant where it flowers early. It smells really good. Yeah. <laughs> How do you harvest this? Is it uh, by hand or do you have machines, tools? Last year we did it by hand. Uh, <laughs> so the owner, Ryan, combined with the market collapse, so 
went from $25 a pound, $5 a pound, less than five. I think it got down to like one or $2 this past few months. Pretty insane. COVID happened. People stole from our field hundreds of our best plants. On top of that, our machine that normally, you know, harvests things just cuts it down at the root. That thing broke. So we had to do it all by hand and they get to be eight feet tall, 20 to 25 pounds. And you got to clip each one yeah. 8,000 times and wheelbarrow it all the way back to the house. So it's, it's quite a labor intensive <laughs> process. And this whole row right here is our specific genetics. So we like tinker around with some of this stuff and uh you know you know crossbreed things hybridize them and this is our stuff so you chop it all down using machine or by hand like you did last year you stick mm -hmm. it in a wheelbarrow bring it here to dry you can only fit about nine plants in this little room so this is made for like small scale processing but you'll see how big of a deal it is when you have eight thousand plants like you do out there yeah. how big of a deal it is to dry out so there's probably nine hanging up and four or five on the ground here how long does it take to fully dry out? Uh, a couple of weeks. Oh, so this doesn't look half bad. Yeah, we sure do got a lot of it. <laughs> so if you want some CBD. So this is a Boondockers Welcome site, but I think they also belong to Harvest Hosts as well. So I was able to, through Boondockers Welcome, get a three night stay here, which is fantastic. And it's free, so you can't beat that. Actually, it's not free. I may have, I may have picked up 120 something dollars worth of stuff so and it's some amazing people they just are just the chill and easygoing people that you'll ever meet okay it is working now okay so you may be wondering what the solution was on how i got my water again well so I looked at a lot of the comments that were made and a lot of them suggested that maybe some of these valves weren't turning very well. Somebody made the suggestion that perhaps, so my water pump is right back in there. And someone suggested I needed to check the uh, um, a filter. So I checked that and that checked out totally fine. So then somebody suggested that um, during hot weather they get an air bubble in the lines and they have to clear it. So what they were suggesting is, you know, you, you kind of Turn, but you turn the water on, you kind of nozzle the thing, and then it'll do that. So what I did is, because I'm by myself, I set up a camera on the faucet, and I left the, I turned the faucet on, and I came in here, and I, I looked, I FaceTimed myself, basically, from my phone to my iPad. It's the same similar setup I used to do with the rig when I was attaching my car. So I had a look at the faucet, so I can be out here and adjusting the nozzles to find out when the water started flowing, so that way I knew that it was working. Well, none of that worked, but I tried one more thing. I went inside to the rig, I turned off the faucet to the sink, came out here, put this back onto dry camping mode, and then right as I did that, then you heard that pump just activate it and pressurize again. So for those of you that have this kind of system, if you do get that air pump in there, you need to make sure that all your valves to all your faucets are closed, so that way you have that way to be able to push that air pressure out and then repressurize. So that's what worked for me, but I also have backups. So I travel with these four water jugs and essentially they're uh, seven and a half gallons each. So I have uh, two of them that are always full and two of them that are always empty. Between the two of them I have 15 gallons of additional fresh water and then if I needed to, if I'm boondocking out somewhere or my gray tanks are getting full, I can drain the gray tanks into the two other ones so that way it'll free up another 15 gallons of space that I always have with me, it's always available. And then another good thing I think I should do is always carry a spare water pump because had the water pump actually gone out, sometimes it might be hard to find. So I think I might grab an extra water pump and just always carry that with me in the event that if something really does go wrong with the pump, I've got a spare. Coming up on the next episode of Claim the Vision, Cat scales are designed to do a very specific job. They're designed to weigh semi-trucks. Doesn't care about side-to-side -side load distribution. We look at the smart way system and talk about why the cat scales just are not good for RVs. I've personally seen an RV with 3,800 pounds of differential on the rear axle, which pushed them completely over the tire rating on the side that was heavy. A uh, cat scale will never tell you that. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so that way you get notifications every time we produce a new video. Thank you for watching Claim the Vision.